Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved video games. But to me, video games are more than just, well, games. To me, they're art. Therefore, the gaming console is the museum used to view these art pieces. In a way, a lot of these consoles could be considered pieces of art themselves. So let's take a, well, semi-sophisticated look at one of these consoles today. I'm not just a collector. I am the console connoisseur. The system I'll be sitting down with today is the Sega Genesis. So let's pour the monster and let's get into it. Known outside of the US as the Mega Drive, it was released by Sega in the US in 1989 and has a library of over 700 games. Not to mention the add-on libraries, but we'll get into those later. The Genesis is a fourth generation console and was discontinued in 1997, giving it a lifespan of eight years. During that time, it sold more than 30 million units. Heh, <laughs> units. I went back and revisited this retro console recently, and I'm gonna give you what I personally think are some of the pros and cons to the Sega Genesis. Launched in December of 1994 and provided by TCI and Time Warner Cable, Sega Channel was a subscription-based content delivery service where you could get cheat codes, news, and even play games online. Think of it as like a primitive Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Now. Though criticized at the time for being expensive at $15 a month plus a $25 activation fee, this price also included equipment rental. The Scientific Atlantic Sega Channel Adapter Exact. When this came out, I remember it blew my mind to have the entire Sonic collection and Toe Jam and Earl all at my fingertips without having to have the cards. It was groundbreaking. And quite honestly, I don't think Sega gets enough credit for what they did. Sega Channel was where I first played Streets of Rage, Castlevania Bloodlines, and Toe Jam and Earl. It was basically like owning an entire library of games, which was really an oddity at that point in gaming. But now let's talk about something that isn't so good. Sega Genesis. Yeah, that's it. Our sincere condolences. What a waste. Shown to the world with an extremely aggressive ad campaign, Sega released two add-ons for the Genesis. The Sega CD, released in 1992, and the 32X in 1994. The Sega CD, which I consider the lesser of two evils, sold 2.2 million units and has a 200 game library. The biggest problem with the Sega CD really is it should have been its own console. Like, it should have just been a separate console away from the Genesis, not a leech on the Genesis. I mean, it even requires its own plug. Now, the 32X sold 800,000 units. A lot of those, though, at a large discount later on in flight and only has 40 games in its library. A lot of this due to the fact that it was hard to find a third-party developer support, and a portion of the library is also just Genesis ports. The Sega CD was far more useful than this monstrosity, but they were really both just placeholders while Sega waited for the Saturn to come out, so neither one of them were that useful. But let's get back to the fun. Sonic the Hedgehog, who would eventually go on to become the face of Sega, started on Genesis. He was first seen in 1991 as a 2D platformer, and went on to star in numerous games spanning across multiple consoles, as well as his own cartoon and movie. Not sure, there are some questionable entries in the Sonic series, but the Genesis games are some of the best you can find on the console. Sonic 2 is my personal favorite Genesis game, and I play it regularly to this day. In my opinion, it was really the simplicity of the game is the reason that it caught on. Sonic never really gained any power-ups. He was as powerful as he was always. He never got bigger, he never shrunk, he was just Sonic, he was fast. 
in the ring system. You collect a bunch of rings, they all pop out of you, and as long as you're able to grab one of them rings, you can take another hit. It was super simple, yet difficult at the same time. This something for everyone gameplay mentality has helped the Sonic the Hedgehog series sell over 140 million units by 2016. Sonic the Hedgehog almost instantly became the flagship game for the Sega Genesis. It was even the packet title. Even Sonic 2 was a packet title at one point. It's the best looking thing in the box though, unfortunately, because the rest of this console, not so visually appealing. Let's talk about the next negative thing. The actual cosmetics of the system itself. The Atari 2600 and the Nintendo Entertainment System, which were roughly the same generation, have iconic, immediately recognizable designs. The Genesis One has a power flick switch instead of a button, and this weird headphone slot adjustment thing instead of the traditional wheel. The Genesis Two has a power button that gets rid of the headphone jack, but that's not the only issue. The Genesis Two resembles more of a waffle iron than a gaming console. The plug is also entirely too bulky, which I know was the trend back then, but I never really understood that. There has to be a way to add them components to the back of the system to just make it a regular plug. The original controller was also not very comfortable in my mind. It was a little bit too big and the button placement was a little bit close together for the size of it. Another problem that they fixed with the Genesis 2, but still, was there no test market on the Genesis 1? Did nobody play this thing before they released it? Everything about it is just bland to me. There's nothing to it. It's a square. It's just a black square with a couple buttons on it. I mean, the Nintendo was a gray square, but it just seemed more fancy to me. And then this monstrosity. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, luckily I was able to go to Toys R Us and I was able to find one of these bad boys for only $16.99, so... We'll try this thing out now. But now let's move on to what is possibly my favorite thing about the Sega Genesis. The music and sounds. The Sega Genesis uses a Yamaha YM2612 and a Texas Instruments SN76489 to produce its sound. I'm not positive what that means, but I do know that together those two things made the Genesis stand out among its contemporaries in the sound department. The same game could sound completely different on Genesis than it did on Super Nintendo. Need an example? Here. I have multiple songs from Genesis games on my playlist that I work out to, because they're just that good. In fact, in no particular order, here's five of my favorites. sweat with anxiety. The Genesis music just really stuck with me. In conclusion, my biggest complaint about the Genesis is how it looks. Other than that, it was innovative, put out some of the biggest hits of the generation, and really became what Sega was known for. 
In fact, if you talk to the average person, they would literally refer to the Genesis as a Sega. So, I'd like to take this time to give a toast to Sega and to the Genesis. As the console connoisseur, I'm happy to have the Genesis in my collection and display it with pride. So thank you for watching. Bye for now.